Uh, the Chinese internet market is absolutely enormous. Uh, it, we're talking about 420 million internet users as of the first half of the year uh, 2010, probably expected to, to exceed fi 450 million and well on its way to 500 million internet users next year. Uh, it's an extremely dynamic, vibrant, fully-fledged ecosystem with every sort of internet company that you can probably imagine. Uh, there are you know, your traditional portals and search engines, internet video sites, social networks, uh, IM providers, you name it. Uh, it has some, it's some interesting characteristics though. I think it, in some ways it's significantly different from uh, more familiar Western internet markets. Uh, for one thing, the dominance of games. Games are an extremely huge piece. Uh, the game economy in China is about twice the size of the total uh, revenues from adver derived from internet advertising in China. Uh, for just to cite one example, email usage is extremely low. People tend instead to use instant messaging. Uh, it's commonplace for somebody to come up to you and ask you not for your email address, but rather for your QQ number or for your MSN ID and it will communicate with you that way. Uh, but in other ways, it's very similar to the uh, internet markets in, say, the United States. Uh, you have the same sort of uh, overnight internet celebrities and memes and viral videos that get passed around. Uh, a lot of consumption of internet content is, is in, in, in a quite similar fashion. One thing that I've noticed about it is that it seems to be just a lot tighter of a community. Those memes get passed around to absolutely everyone in China. It's less fragmented right now. There is uh, more sort of homogeneity among internet users in China, uh, which is, is an interesting thing, I think, from a marketer's perspective. Uh, there have been a, a, a really long litany of failures of, of quite well-known American internet companies, uh, everyone from uh, Yahoo to eBay to, well, Google arguably has not failed, but uh, Facebook obviously never really tried, nor did Twitter, and they were they are now blocked in China. But yeah, there, there, there are very few, if any, stories of success. Probably uh, the most successful internet company to have come into China, well, there are two, but in, in roundabout ways. One of them is actually Yahoo, because of its ownership of, of a, a large chunk, some 40%, of Alibaba, which is China's leading B2B uh, e-commerce provider. The other, I think you, you, you have to say, would be uh, Amazon, which bought a large stake, bought a company called Joyo, uh, which is running neck and neck for first place in traditional B2C e-commerce. Other than that, Google, I think, um, although they've had very highly publicized uh, problems with the Chinese government, especially beginning in January of this year. Uh, they seem to have arrived at a modus vivendi, which everyone is comfortable with, and their revenues in China are f still fairly substantial, even though their market share seems to be shrinking. I think one of the great pities, though, uh, is that all the, the attention that's paid to internet censorship in China, while I think it's justified, uh, if it's not done in a nuanced way, we tend to, to blinker ourselves to a lot of the, the really important action happening on the ground in China. And people with, with a very casual understanding who only know that the, the internet in China is, and in fact it is, heavily censored, don't realize also that the internet has become a de facto kind of public sphere, that it really is setting the national agenda, is really setting the tone for the national conversation in, in many ways. That uh, netizens have become more politically potent than at any time probably uh, in, in Chinese history. The ordinary people who use the internet now have uh, a, a say in the political life of the country that, that is, is unprecedented. These two things seem to be entirely contradictory. Uh, on the one hand, a very draconian internet regulatory situation, and on the other hand, the emergence of this kind of public sphere. But that's the truth of China. You have to be able to hold in your head two seemingly very contradictory ideas. Baidu, from its very inception, uh, has intended to become a global internet player. Uh, right now, we are focused almost entirely on China, and there's a lot of reason for that. There's a lot of tailwind behind us here. Internet population of China at 420 million seems very large, but that's only 31.8% of the population. So uh, we still have a lot of room to grow here. 
we have as clients something like 290,000 uh, small and medium enterprises in China, but there are 40 million of them total in China, so we're, we're barely touching the, the, the potential market here. Uh, down the road, uh, we certainly are we're doing development work in nine different languages besides English and Chinese. Uh, we are looking for opportunities in other markets. We're not, by any means, planning on plunging headlong into markets where Google is already really dominant. So that would be very, very difficult to do. Uh, but there are a lot of emerging markets that we have our, our eye on. Our uh, CEO, founder, Robin Lee, has made it very clear that in 10 years' time, he expects Baidu will be a household name in uh, half of the world's internet markets.